In SeaSnake Basics, we introduced you to the SeaSnake Diagnostic System. We showed you its components and demonstrated the basics of operating its features and controls. In SeaSnake Tips and Tricks, we'll go beyond the basics to give you some tips and techniques that will help you get the most out of your equipment. The key to performing an inspection efficiently is setting up the equipment so you can see the monitor clearly and control the push cable easily. How you set up your equipment each time will depend on the equipment you're using and the conditions at the job site. Here are a couple of ideas to keep in mind as you're setting up your equipment. Bright light hitting the monitor screen will make the image very hard to see, so point your monitor away from bright light sources whenever possible. Keep the camera reel within an arm's length or maximum control of the push cable with minimum effort. And keep in mind that the camera reels can be laid flat when it's safer, easier, or more convenient to do so. Choosing an appropriate access point is the key to a successful inspection. A suitable access point will safely accommodate the size camera that you're using, and it will get you to the point in the line that you want to inspect. A good rule of thumb is that you can use a camera where you would use a comparably sized cutter. Here are some things to consider when evaluating an access point. Will its size, shape, and construction get you safely into the portion of line you want to inspect? How many turns are between the access point and the portion of the line you need to inspect, and how tight are they? Cleanouts and main vent stacks generally make the best access points. Smaller vents and removed toilet and sink fixtures can also be used, but getting the camera into and through the line may be more difficult, and the distance you can push may be greatly reduced. Fixtures with P-traps, such as sinks, floor drains, and toilets, are generally unusable as access points because the turn radius is too tight. To use these locations, you'll need to remove the trap to gain access to the drain line. DVW pipe generally makes for a poor access point because its thin walls have sharp edges that can slice open your push cable. Also, its turns are generally too sharp for the camera to easily navigate. Vents above a kitchen window also tend to make poor access points because of the number and tightness of the turns involved. Proper cable handling techniques will help get you into and through the line with minimum effort, reduce the likelihood of damaging your push cable, and extend its useful life. The three most common types of damage to sea snake push cables are premature wear caused by repeatedly dragging the cable across the edge of an access point, cutting the cable jacket on the sharp edge of an access point, and kinking the cable by folding it over on itself. These risks can be greatly minimized by simply keeping your lead hand close to the access point and guiding the cable through the center of the opening. Using this basic technique will greatly extend the life of your cable, minimize costly repairs, and keep your system in the field where it can make you money. Getting the camera through a fitting and into the portion of line you want to inspect can sometimes be challenging. If the shape, construction, or location of a fitting makes it difficult to get the camera through, there are a couple of techniques you can try. If you can build enough momentum with your push, you may be able to pop the camera through the fitting with a smooth, quick push. First, push until the camera hits the back wall of the fitting. Then grab the cable a few inches above the access point, pull it back another foot or so, and push in one smooth, quick motion. When using this technique, make sure to keep your lead hand close to the opening and guide the cable through the center of the access point. In situations where you can't build momentum to pop the camera through, or if the fitting is pointed in the wrong direction, a length of string looped through the spring will let you bend the spring so that you can maneuver the camera into the portion of line you need to inspect. This technique can help you get into a branch vent that ties into the main vent, get through a combi immediately after a series of tight turns, and enter a fixture tee after the trap and elbow have been removed. In most cases, you'll need to rotate the cable so that the string pulls the camera in the right direction. When manipulating the cable, be careful not to over-twist or kink it, which could cause premature failure. Once the camera is through the fitting, pull the string out of the line to help prevent hang-ups. When performing a pipe inspection, Running a small amount of cool water in the line will help lubricate the cable 
making it easier to push, and helping you get farther down the line. Water can also help you unstick your camera when pulling back. In this example, the camera is having trouble getting back through a tight turn in a secondary vent pipe. But by simply running a small amount of water in the line, the technician is able to pull back through the turn with relatively little effort. If you're new to pipe inspections, you'll find that it's easy to lose your sense of direction inside a pipe. This is another case where running a bit of water in the line can really help. Water can help you determine the direction of flow so that you know which way your camera is headed. Water can also help you identify lines that tie into the line you're inspecting. And if you're using a non-self-leveling camera, water makes it easy to differentiate between the top and bottom of a pipe so that you can maintain your sense of direction through turns. As we saw in Sea Snake Basics, pipe centering guides can improve the image by raising the camera above water or muck in the line, and by making it easier to see the top of larger pipes more clearly. Using multiple guides will help the camera stay level as it travels through the pipe, but by using just one guide, positioned near the end of the spring, you can tilt the camera up and down in the line, Pushing forward tilts the camera down, and pulling back tilts the camera up. This technique is especially useful in larger lines, and when you're trying to find a clean-out from inside the pipe. The Count Plus makes it easy to create and display on-screen text. It can store up to 20 pages of text, and several pages have been pre-programmed for you. You can use these pages as is, modify them to suit your needs, or delete them and create new pages. To display a text page, press the text key to turn the text on. Press the down key and scroll to the page you want, then press the select key to display it. Refer to your operator's manual for detailed instructions on how to use the text page feature. If you own a rigid receiver, transmitter, and inductive clamp, you can energize your Sea Snake push cable with an active line tracing signal that will allow you to trace the cable's path out to the transmitter beacon, or SOND, that's located behind the Sea Snake camera head. In most cases, you'll need to have some water flowing in the line for this technique to work. This line was dry, so we're using a hose to get some water flowing. When you're ready to locate the camera head, activate its SOND. Next, Coil several turns of the Sea Snake system cable on the camera reel and place the inductive clamp's jaws through the coil. Connect the inductive clamp to the transmitter, turn the transmitter on, and set it to 33 kilohertz. Turn your receiver on and set it to 33 kilohertz line trace mode. Now you can trace the Sea Snake push cable just as you would any other metallic line. If you're not familiar with line tracing, review the operator's manual and training video that came with your receiver. As you're tracing, keep an eye on the numeric signal readings. When you see them drop, you've walked past the sond. At this point, you can switch the receiver to sond mode and locate your sond normally. For complete details on using your rigid locating equipment, Please see their respective operator manuals. In the past few minutes, we've shown you some tips and techniques that can help you be more productive with your Sea Snake equipment. If you haven't done so already, be sure to visit the Sea Snake Forum on Rigid's website. The Sea Snake Forum provides a place where professional users can give and receive tips, techniques, and helpful advice on their Sea Snake equipment. On behalf of everyone at Rigid, thank you for choosing Sea Snake Diagnostic Equipment, and thank you for watching this video.